All right, so now we're going to talk power analysis for mixed effects models. Um, let's think about this in the context of our projects that we're doing now and other um, analyses that we will be conducting in class during this week, including the B study. So of course we know all about power, how important it is in designing an experiment, but we have to go back and recompute power for mixed models because um, things have changed and um, they, they um, require new kinds of calculations uh, for these changes in the model. We're going to be computing power using the old school tests, and this works really good if we have balanced designs, but um, I'm also going to show you some exact tests or simulation-based tests that I really um, appreciate now um, with our new approaches for uh, modeling this kind of data. So if we have pure random terms, those interaction terms, alpha, betas, where all those factors are random and we can assume that they are independent, um, we can make some assumptions, okay? So I have alluded to this many, 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 many times in class, but I didn't want to introduce it until this point because it, it was going to be too much too early, I think. Um, the mixed terms where, say, A is fixed and B is random, we have some choices to make, some options, I guess you would say. We can assume the unrestricted model where we just presume that alpha betas are all independent. Um, often this makes a lot of sense. We'll talk about concrete cases in class about where it makes sense to assume the unrestricted model. But then we also have our restricted model, where some of those elements of the interaction terms, the alpha betas, we're gonna, are going to add to zero across any fixed subscript. Um, in our case, let's see, A is fixed, so it would be the I subscript in this case. Um, and uh, otherwise would be independent. So that summing to zero across a fixed subscript, of course, um, induces dependency among certain interaction terms, but um, the ones not uh, involved in that particular sum would, of course, be or would be assumed otherwise independent. So this is what we're going to talk mean by restricted and unrestricted models from now on. This is a particular case that applies to uh, mixed models. So sometimes when we use restrictions on our mixed models, this will induce some negative correlations among our random effects. We've actually seen this in place. Um, I introduced the coding for this early on without telling you that the term that we were making a restriction about the model, but um, we can revisit that in class to make sure we understand what was happening there. Uh, when we assume restrictions on our model, um, we're essentially saying that the two random effects from the same mixed term are going to be negatively correlated if their subscripts corresponding to that random, to the random factors or the random factor um, is the same and otherwise they're independent. Okay, so sometimes this makes sense, sometimes it does not. The test usually defaults to our restricted assumptions, but again, we need to decide which is appropriate. Um, it can be tricky, according to Gary, and I agree. I This is one of the more esoteric modeling decisions you have to make, in my opinion. Um, but a fallback that I, I'll admit I use all the time is that unrestricted assumptions are more conservative. So when we have unrestricted assumptions, um, I tend to err on the side of conservativeness um, most of the time of making a decision. And so this is a good default. If it's really not clear to you whether to use an unrestricted or restricted model and you need to make a decision. So what does it mean to be conservative again? It's going to be uh, more difficult to reject the null hypothesis and find an uh, effect significant. I usually consider that a more costly mistake, hence my inclination to prefer conservative assumptions when modeling. Okay, and just... Just to be clear as mud here too, uh, when we've been using the limmer functions in R the entire time, there are other ways we could fix mix, mixed models, by the way, but almost everybody uses limmer. 
Um, they always assume unrestricted unless you change it. Um, <laughs> you can you can um, make some so-called heroic efforts to make LME fit models under restricted assumptions. Um, but I agree with Jerry, Gary, not Jerry, Gary, that we should just concentrate on the unrestricted approach. And we'll talk about this a little bit more and um, hopefully get a little more understanding about this in class. Okay, so a little review now of the ANOVA um, mixed effects stuff. Um, if we're using an ANOVA table, 